yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. To overcome this premeditated invasion, the American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory. After President Roosevelt's infamy speech, support for war was high among Congress and many Americans. The nation's young men began answering Uncle Sam's call and entered the military. The main reason for service was a high sense of patriotism and duty in response to Pearl Harbor. The other main reason was a panic that gripped the country. If the Japanese were able to successfully cause terror and inflict heavy damage at Pearl Harbor, many people wondered what was to prevent a summer assault on the U.S. mainland. The U.S. was able to achieve victory during World War II because of the remarkable contributions from a wide range of Americans on the home front and on the battlefields because of their national unity and need to sacrifice in order to achieve victory. The spark of patriotism and morale made the American people back at home respond well to take part in the war effort, like by buying war bonds, participating in a variety of rationing programs, and setting up local victory gardens to save food. Also, there were collection drives for scrap metal, rubber, and aluminum cans, which were put towards producing mass quantities of planes, warships, rifles, and tanks, because it was essential to our produce access powers. The success in mobilizing economic output was a major factor in supporting combat operations. The high demand of such war-related materials was countered by a redefined American worker, woman. All the day long, where the rain or shine, she's a part of the assembly line. She's making history, working for victory, rosy. The riveter keeps a sharp lookout for sabotage, sitting up there on the fuselage. That little friend can do more than an American do. Women were mobilized to an unprecedented degree. With tens of thousands of American men in the armed forces, women began securing jobs as welders, electricians, and riveters in defense plants, which before had been strictly for men. A woman who worked in the defense industry came to be known as Rosie the Riveter, which symbolized the new importance of the female industrial worker. In fact, the number of women in the workforce during the war increased by nearly 60%. However, early in the war, racial discrimination posed a problem to the nation's unity in a time of war. Just two months after Pearl Harbor, FDR signed into law Executive Order 9066, which resulted in the removal from their communities and the subsequent imprisonment of all Americans of Japanese descent who resided on the West Coast. It was a combination of wartime panic and the belief on the part of some that anyone of Japanese ancestry, even those who were born in the U.S., was somehow capable of disloyalty. Many Mexican migrant workers entered the country in response to factory labor shortages on the Pacific coast and in the southwest as part of the Bracero program where they had a contract for a limited time. This led to the Zoot Suit riots in LA where white sailors stationed nearby invaded Mexican American communities and without any police restraint attacked Zoot Suiters in Detroit, a large number of African Americans migrated there to better their economic conditions, leading to urban tension. By 1943, racial friction in the city led to violent riots. Despite ongoing racial animosity, many men from different ethnic groups managed to put aside any differences or hatred to go serve for their country, displaying true heroism in doing so. The racial tension pressured the military to lift some traditional practices like not limiting blacks to only menial tests, but instead finally letting black servicemen into the Marines or Army Air, like the Tuskegee Airmen. Also, there were the Navajo Code Talkers, working in military communications and speaking their own language, which was hard for the Axis powers to break their code. Despite the internment of their family members, young Japanese-American men began registering in the military to prove their courage and loyalty to the U.S. Their segregated units fought bravely in Italy, France, and Germany between 1943 and 1945. The 442nd Regimental Combat Team became the most decorated unit for its size and length of service. FDR was right. It was indeed the American people, black, white, Japanese, Native American, man, woman, soldier, factory worker, or just citizen, who in their righteous might did win through to absolute victory. In most ways, the war loosened traditional barriers that had restricted the lives of minorities and women. There was too much demand for fighting men and too much demand for labor for rigid traditional barriers to survive intact in society.